Okay, what if this brand came to life? We're gonna talk about Starbucks, uh, near and dear to a lot of people's hearts, especially around the fall when the pumpkin spice latte comes out. I'm not gonna figure that much into what I'm going to draw or paint here today, but let's get started. I think that, that really Starbucks is well known for some things, coffee most of all, duh, but also their logo, and their logo has this bizarre two-tailed kind of mermaid look. She's a mermaid with two tails, so I'm, I'm really going to try and make the personification of Starbucks a mermaid, but not with two tails, because that's weird, right? Because a mermaid's not weird. So I start really small like this, and I start to like pull it up larger and larger as I go. This is kind of allowing me to see forms as if they're really far away, so I'm not like focusing on every curve of the hair or highlight in the eye or anything like that it really just helps me diagnose big shapes and this is really sped up and in photoshop so you don't really see my hand flying around all over the canvas you kind of see just what i'm doing imagine you know i'm a professional illustrator i have these weird tools so you've probably seen an ipad or a tablet of some kind i have one that's like about two feet wide that sits on my desk and that's kind of what I work on to do all this. So I, you know, I'm literally just kind of like drawing and I can see what I'm doing as I'm drawing, just not really on paper. I can kind of make it behave like paper and behave like a pencil. This kind of looks like a pencil scratch. So you can see we're kind of starting to form up the mermaid. Um, it looks like a mermaid. It looks like she's smiling and she's holding a couple really nice, I think they're demi toss cups of coffee. I'm not actually sure if that's the right word, but yeah, she's holding them and she's going to be underwater holding them, which doesn't make any sense. I recognize that the coffee would be all over the place, but I just think it was a cool visual because Starbucks is kind of known for like offering friendliness and some kind of higher end coffee, even though it's really not that high end. It just appears to be. So we got a cheerful kind of mermaid gal and she is giving us coffee. I've kind of drawn an apron on her because that's what all the baristas wear at Starbucks to kind of keep the stuff off of you. So, you know, there was this design conundrum I had where you think about a mermaid and people always even in the disney films kind of cover them up so they're not indecent with something like shells or whatnot but it's kind of begging for it when you do the starbucks mermaid to give her the apron because if you're gonna be indecent you might as well be in uniform so that's why she's wearing the green apron Oh yeah, Starbucks is kind of built for those hipsters, you know, that try and enjoy their coffee and their pegged pants with pointy shoes and bizarre little round glasses. So I gave her kind of the big nerd glasses. I'm disparaging that a little bit, even though I'm kind of that way. I can poke fun at myself. I've been wearing nerd glasses for years. What I don't have is this amazing head of hair. I kind of wanted it to be floating in the water and kind of all over the place because I just liked the volume of it and the texture of it. It just, it just looks sharp. It gives it a little bit more of a silhouette. Because you can kind of like, if even if you blocked out everything, you can kind of tell it's a mermaid. She's a mermaid holding coffee cups. Little known fact, speaking of uniforms, I used to work at Starbucks. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's way better being an illustrator, by the way. But it wasn't all bad. This was a few years ago, and I don't know if you've never seen me in person. I have a whole lot of tattoos on my arms. And so, evidently, back then, the Starbucks wasn't really cool with a bunch of tattoos on your arms. So they would make me wear, as part of my uniform, a long sleeve black button-up shirt. Now you're working with hot coffee over a hot coffee machine thingy espresso bar. So you're just sweating and it's just horrible. And imagine on top of that, you're, you're steaming milk and cream and putting it into people's coffees. And yeah, they're gonna enjoy that. But what you don't realize is your barista having splashed all of that all over his or her long sleeve button up shirt is by the end of the day, going to smell just like rotten milk. Oh, was that hideous. It was like one of my least favorite parts of being a barista at Starbucks. The other part is what I like to call social math. Literally 
cannot make change if somebody's staring at me. Like, I need to walk into another room just to figure out how to make change. The, the cash registers would make those little calculations for you, and, and that's all cool, except for eh, all those times where they give you, like, the change differently than the stinking cash register, like, just calculated for you. And, and some people can make those changes on the fly with math. No, not me. I can't figure it out. You know what? I just want to throw all the money at them over the top of the counter and just, here, have this. Let's talk about color theory. I'm choosing a green. That's what this is. The color wheel right there is, you know, kind of green, what we're looking for. Not a blue. Water is not blue. And so if I'm choosing a green, I want a color that's directly across from it on the color wheel. These are called complementary colors. And that's just going to allow these colors to really fly off the page. One of these times I'm going to do something with a little bit more complex color harmony than just complementary, where the two colors are right across from one another on the color wheel, and choose something just a little bit more complex so we can talk a little color nerdery goodness. There are two things that I super love visually about design. and um, One of them is color theory. I'm a little bit gone on that. And the other is typography. Super opinionated about typography. Comic Sans is an atrocity, and if you use it, you hate me. That is very clear, and everyone knows that. Please love me and don't use that. Also, Papyrus is terrible. I could get going on that for quite some time, and really it's not part of, like, it's not germane to the conversation here. It's, you know, we're looking at Bob painting a purple mermaid, and you might ask yourself, why did you turn her skin all purple? It's so that I could back that off and just introduce more tones and color into her skin. It was looking kind of ashen and boring and flat. So if I add a little bit of color in there, it can start to round out the forms. And nobody is purely one color or another. In fact, in the human face, you know, as you travel from top to bottom, you can have like blue tones around your chin and yellow tones in your forehead. And of course, those rosy kind of pinkish blushiness down the, the very middle by your cheeks and nose. So really, you can't just like out of hand pick something and go, you know, ham on that color. No, and here's a good example, you know, adding some tones. Like, there is some pinks and some yellows and some greens in that tail that kind of round out that form and make it just a little bit more interesting to look at. The, the shadows typically wind up being cool colors, and cool colors are those colors that are like purple, uh, even that's a little warm, blue. They tend to recede from you as you look at them in a page. They tend to kind of go away from you. So if you put it into a shadow, an artist will put that into a shadow and it'll appear a little deeper because a cool color goes away from your eyes. It tricks your eyes a little bit. Uh, we're nearing the end of this illustration and I think I'm liking how it turns out. It's, it's kind of grown on me. At first I was like, you're being silly. You went right for the mermaid thing. That's a little bit on the nose. But I, I do think it works. I think it's recognizable. If you walked up on this, you'd be like, Haha, it's a mermaid that works at Starbucks. And she's underwater. But really, I don't know. I'm kind of proud of it. What do you guys think? What should I do next? I know somebody mentioned Nintendo. I think that would be a lot of fun. Nintendo. This is the part where I ask you to go ahead and like this video if you indeed like it. And if you like this video and maybe want to see more, then you should go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you've subscribed and for some reason don't check your YouTube feed every day, hit the little bell. YouTube will tell you when I put up new stuff. And of course, share it. Share it with anyone you think might be entertained or might benefit from some of this knowledge. Finally, create. Create something today, even if it's just a better day for someone else.